we're going to take a look at the SIP 403 forbidden response. And uh, the environment I'm working with is going to be uh, a UCM cluster. We're going to be making a call through a cube to a SIP ITSP provider. And what's going to happen is the cube is going to send back a 403 forbidden response to the invite method originating from the HQ cluster. So this 403 forbidden, uh, my guess is a lot of you, most of you watching this video right now are very, very familiar with why uh, this 403 forbidden is going to be generated by the iOS environment at the cube. But uh, I still, in my classes, my CCIE collaboration boot camps that I run every month, I still see uh, this message and people put their hands up and they say, Vic, I don't know why the cube's generating this. Uh, internally, what I'm thinking is, come on, boy, come on. You've got to know about this forbidden message. Okay, but outside, I'm like very patiently, diligently, we'll explain why. And let's go through that explanation right now. And so here, here's my cube. It doesn't really matter if it's R1, R2. It doesn't really matter what router it is, what gateway it is. Show IP address trust list. This uh, is toll fraud mechanism that's built into iOS 15 and beyond. And uh, unknown IP addresses cannot make calls, VoIP to VoIP connections. So obviously you've got VoIP to VoIP connections here. Okay, SIP on this side and it's SIP again on this side. So uh, with this HQ UCM cluster has to be a known IP address or network uh, with with respect to the cube. So the cube's got to know about HQ UCM cluster. And as it happens right now, we don't. Now this happens to be my backbone IP address. And this is known. So for example, right now, we could, without any problems, get a call working that way to the HQ cluster, okay? Because the SIP ITSP backbone uh, is, uh, is a known IP address. Why is the SIP uh, ITSP a known IP address? Because there's a dial pair. Let's just take a look at that dial pair. The dial pair here has a session target. And there's the backbone IP. So once this IP address is uh, this IP address is entered within a dial pair, it is now trusted. It is known. So that IP address can make a call, VoIP to VoIP, but no other IP address can. So what we could do, well, first of all, let's just see this happen right now. We can look at the uh, SIP messaging from the perspective of the cube, which is just our debug CC SIP messages command in iOS, or we can go to RTMT. I'm going to use RTMT for now. Uh, there will be other times where I'll obviously go on the cube. For example, when I want to check if the problem is over here between these two guys, then I'm probably most likely going to go and run the debug command in iOS. Since the problem resides between the cluster and the cube, then I'm going to use RTMT, but I could also use the debug command. So I've got RTMT open over here and go to call manager tab real time i've made the call by the way so you don't have to go through the painful experience of me making a call and it failing and it just takes a few seconds okay there's a number of calls there and here is the sip call ladder or call flow diagram uh, the invite this is the phone on the left hand side invite comes in trying i i wasn't really paying attention to that over here so that messaging is between the, the phone and uh, UCM cluster. Not really interested in that right now. Um, then what we see is the invite go out to the R1 cube. Trying is sent by the cube and then forbidden. There's the act back. And again, the forbidden is, is passed on back to the originating uh, user agent uh, client over here, which is our phone. So there is the forbidden. Quick look inside the forbidden, and we shall see that we have Q850 course code 21, which is call rejected. How do I know that's call rejected? Going to give you a little uh, shortcut. You go to any iOS, voice, hunt, question mark, and look for, in parentheses, 21. You could just do a Control A, Control C, Control V uh, into Notepad and just search for the string 21. But I 
think, I think it's core rejected. I've been saying it for the last few years. Yes, there it is. Core rejected 21. And this is a classic case of uh, toll fraud. Let me go back to our command there. Show IP address trust list. Key command there. You've got to use this command if you ever see a 403 forbidden. And you can see here, when this is in play, when this is it's obviously operationally up, when this has actually been invoked, it tells you the core reject uh, 21 course code will be generated. Okay, so well, that's what we're seeing in the, in the trace. Let's fix it. Uh, the one way to fix it was is to just have a dial pair pointing to the UCM cluster. You may need two dial pairs because you've got two core manager nodes in the cluster. So just have you know two dial pairs and session target. HQ pub, session target, HQ sub. Uh, if you're not making calls going that way, if you're not making calls in that direction, you don't need those DARP here. So that's probably not the cleanest way of doing it. I would say the best way of doing it, voice service VoIP. Okay, let's just put it on the top there, voice service VoIP. And then we go um, IP address trust list. And now let's add, we can add IPv4. I can add my network here is I've got two IP addresses dot 11 dot 12 but I could just add the network slash 24 there I could do that I could just put the host in and then put the next host in exit out of that okay uh, show IP address trust list and there you can see these are the IP addresses I've put in right now. And you are going to have to go through the painful experience of me making a call right now. I'm not going to answer. I'm not really interested in that. And you can see I've got the the debug command running on there. I'm on the, on the console connection and it's pretty slow. So let me go to my RTMT. And if you watch my RTMT video, you'll know that I should you should always put in 60. Otherwise, I'm only capturing the last... 30 minutes of calls. I want the last 30 minutes and the next 30 minutes. So put 60 there, hit run. And I'll pause because this is painful. There you go. If only our TMT was as quick as that. Uh, in all fairness, it's going through quite a lot of uh, big SDL trace files. And there we go. If only our TMT was as quick as that normally. All right. And so now we get the ringing come back from the cube. And obviously there's messaging from the cube to the backbone, which we don't see. And uh, the core works. So there we go. Now, in the lab environment, you can go down the path of adding the IP addresses one by one. Let me get rid of that debug command. Or what we could do, and let me just default that voice service VoIP stuff in there. All right. So what I can do is I can just voice service VoIP. You, you'll notice right now I've got the allow connections zip to zip already in there, bound zip. I've done all that stuff. Okay, this is specific to the forbidden message. And uh, let me go to this trust list. Let me see if I can default the trust list there. No, we can't. So I have to go inside there and then um, let me just remove these IP addresses. So I'm going to give you the, the quick hack, the quick fix without having to... Um, Add in IP addresses one by one. You don't really care about toll fraud in the lab. The, uh, the there's, there's no outside world connection in there. Default that. And now, so what I would do is, and this is something you probably don't want to do in real life. No IP address, trusted authenticate. Before I do that, let's have another quick look. Show IP address, trust list. And you can see here, the operational state is up. No IP address trust, no IP address trusted authenticate. Now, we'll look, look at this uh, command here. It asks you, it says this is going to disable the entire thing, the whole feature. So it will be operationally down. Okay, but you do have to confirm it. So a lot of people forget that enter. They just carry on, especially on a cop copy-paste job from one router to the other, you never get that extra carriage or an extra enter or carriage return. So hit enter twice there. 
if you want to copy paste make sure there's a gap you have an extra carriage return in your notepad or text file so now let's do a show IP address trust list and uh, which one was it show IP address okay I can't find it let's just go back then show IP address trust list and you can see right now admin state down operational state down so this is just not working at all. It doesn't really matter that we don't have our core manager IP addresses. It's not being used. It's down. 